There was something of a mini invasion of the De Pere 14 cinema in October, but these were friendly forces, a group of military history buffs from the Armed Forces Museum in Alton, Illinois. They had come for the sneak preview of Flags of Our Fathers, about the World War II Battle of Iwo Jima. And they came because they had, in their own way, actually helped make this movie. And they were hoping that somewhere in the exciting battle scenes, they would see the machine that the producers had taken out of their museum and put into action. There's quite a story on that flatbed truck. That's a World War II-era LVT, landing vehicle, tracked. They were nicknamed alligators and water buffaloes. And this one's the proud possession of the Armed Forces Museum in Alton, Illinois. Go ahead and do what you want to do. Go ahead, pull that. The amphibious craft has played a role in local history, a role in world history, and most recently a role in a major motion picture, a Clint Eastwood, Steven Spielberg movie about the Battle of Iwo Jima. Invasion scenes for the movie were shot in the summer of 05, and the LVT arrived back in Alton on a morning in October with a new paint job that was something of a surprise. Frankly, I've never seen one of that color, right. uh, unfortunately, but we hope it days and Spielberg's got some good advisors, so we went along with the paint yeah. color. But uh, anyway, we did research for them and told what color it was supposed to be, but they didn't listen to that, so they may know something we don't know. Maybe so. Carol Venable is the founder of the Armed Forces Museum, a volunteer group, including a lot of retired Boeing workers, devoted to these old military machines, which, like a lot of old veterans, can be a little creaky and cranky. The first problem this morning, the tailgate was stuck fast. It's coming on its own now. Now it's up to the museum volunteers to okay. get the engine running and drive this thing off the trailer, and that's going to take some doing. But they had worked hard to get this operational before they sent it off to the movie makers. And the museum just didn't send its alligator to Iceland. It sent two of its members, a father and son, to help with the machine and, as experienced reenactors, to serve as extras. You'll be looking pretty closely, won't you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we there was plenty of times where we had cameras right in, right in our faces, you know, so it all depends on the editing. Yeah. You just hope Dirty Harry himself had a camera right here. Once a, it's a lot going through the mind when that was going on. So do you know if it's in the final cut of the film? Is it going to show up? Oh, yeah, it'll be in there because there's a lot of scenes. I moved it around for him. Right. So, so it's, it's, in the, it's actually in the movie. We worked awful hard to get it going and get it ready to, to ship on up there, so... Now that it's in running condition and a nice paint job, we'd like to see it in a couple more features. This will take some time, but the thing does run, and that's why the movie makers went to so much trouble to track it down and rent it. It is one of the few survivors from an era when we couldn't build these things fast enough. The amphibious vehicles were originally designed for use in the Florida Everglades, but after the U.S. entered World War II, they seemed perfect for the island invasions in the war in the Pacific. And the government started placing orders. In St. Louis and other industrial centers, factories were being converted from consumer goods to military production. Not just weapons like tanks made in Granite City, but uniforms, shoes. One factory was filling orders for bunk beds for the Navy. And the St. Louis Car Company, maker of railroad and street cars, was turning out specialized ammunition cars. It also built airplanes, trainers, and then it converted one of its production lines to build landing craft. But not the kind that just stopped at the beach and unloaded its troops. The LVT-2 is known as the alligator tank. And then we built the LVT-4s, which was called the water buffalo, and were very uh, important in, in making those landings because when they hit the beach, they could keep going because they were tracked. The St. Louis Car Company tested its vehicles in Spanish Lake. There were other factories building these things as well. The treads could get them through rough terrain, even over coral reefs. But the treads also propelled the vehicle through the water. It 
was tough, it was functional, it wasn't built for speed, and it certainly wasn't built for comfort. You are Huh? I'd like to say it's built for a young man, not an old man. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty tight up here. Yeah, it is. All your control panels, your two laterals, your clutch, the accelerator pedal. This is your throttle. Everything seems to be stuck. Well, this has been through a lot probably during the filming, hasn't it? Yeah, but it's been in the salt water. Yeah. This thing drives pretty much like a bulldozer, and that's something Ken Dunahee knows how to do. So he's the man who will get it off the flatbed, although it will come only in fits and starts, and an occasional little fire from the ether they use to help start the engine. Remember, this thing was built some 60 years ago, and it was built by the St. Louis Car Company. The museum found it in a local marina where it had been used for ice breaking but they're not really sure of its war record. Whether, like these, it was actually used as intended in real beach landings. They do know that it did see action in Iceland. That's where the new movie was shot, because it, like Iwo Jima, has black volcanic beaches. It looks battle war. It looks like it's been through hell. And it certainly has. It used to scratch it. They bumped into each other in the water. Out there on the thing, guys jumping in and out on the side. You'll see it in the movie. It's going to be quite a movie, I'll tell you, when they get done with it. The movie makers paid the museum for use of the LVT, which is a good thing, considering that this museum is an old industrial site. What they collect is big. It's difficult to store and to protect, let alone rebuild. This is a labor of love, and they have a lot more of that than they do money. Although the payment they got will give them a little more breathing room. Twenty thousand we put the bank and it's collecting interest right now. This was August two thousand five and Carol Venable passed away the following summer, just a few months before the release of Flags of Our Fathers. But he knew the movie deal was going to keep the museum he founded going for at least several more years. Oh, it was his life. It was his life. Uh, in fact his last couple of days that he was alive in the hospital, he had mentioned now we're all supposed to get together for the premiere showing of the movie with the alligator and so he is real excited about it. Some people write books about history and some people make movies about history. But these guys have their own way of honoring the past. And if it is loud, smoky, and uncomfortable, it is the real thing. A bit player in a very big story.